the next topic. This is all in one assignment to start the course out. Still under the basics is rationalizing denominators. Now in class I'll be doing more and why we rationalize denominators, but for this lesson I'll just actually do it so you can see how it's done. So for example, the first one here, rationalizing the denominator means this is the denominator, 2 squared 3. Squared 3 is an irrational number. I do not want an irrational number in the denominator. So in order to get rid of that, okay, I can simply multiply both the top and the bottom by square root of 3. And you'll remember from your rules, multiplying irrationals, okay, the numbers on the outside and the inside both go together. Okay, so I'll end up with 2 times 1 out in front leaves me with 2. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 gives me square root of 9. On the top, simply a 5 square root of 3. Okay, so you might be saying that's still irrational. I still have a square root. Well, I have a square root of 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So I end up with 2 times 3 over 5 square root of 3, which is just simply 5 square root of 3 over 6. Okay. So now I have a rational denominator. One more example here. Again, multiplying top and bottom by the irrational number on the bottom. So the irrational number here is square root of 5, so I multiply both the top and the bottom by square root of 5. And I end up with 3 times, it's going to be the square root of 25. You'll notice a pattern here. You do not have to write the square root of 25 every time if you do not want to. So obviously, every time we do this, we're just going to end up with 5, or if I'm multiplying square root 3 times square root 3, it's always going to be multiplying by 3. If I'm multiplying square root 7 times square root 7, it's going to end up being 7. Okay, so on the bottom here, I'm simply going to end up with 3 times 5. On the top, I end up with 7 square root 5. So then our final answer becomes 7 square root 5 over Now, before we move on to the next rationalizing topic, we have to talk about conjugates. So, in standard or in a general form, the conjugate of something like a plus b is the same two numbers, a and b. Okay, so the numbers stay the same. The conjugate to get the conjugate of a plus b is simply change the signs. Okay, so I have a plus in between, so I make it a negative. So the conjugate of a plus b is a subtract b. Okay. The reason that we use conjugates, okay, and the reason they're convenient, just to go into a little bit of theory here, okay, is when you multiply them out together, okay, if you use FOIL to multiply, to multiply these together, a times a gives me a squared. Then I have a times a negative b, negative AB. Okay, next up I have B times A, which gives me a positive AB. And then I have B times negative B, which gives me a negative B squared. Simplifying these, a negative AB plus an AB, these cancel out, so I'm left with A squared plus, or excuse me, subtract B squared. And this works every time like this. And the middle terms always go away. Okay? And I'm always left with the first number squared and subtract the second number squared. Okay? So this is the general case. So I'm going to show you now how to apply it to any case with numbers and square roots. 